Hey, hey, what's this supposed to mean? Springs in MASH? Yep. Okay, so we need this uh, box here. Here is the box. And we make it a little bit more flat like this. Press the key F in order to focus on it. Right mouse click, new material, Arnold standard surface, which means it's white. Let's change the color to a light red. Now let's pick the faces and choose this one and give this right mouse click a new material, an Arnold shader, a standard surface and choose the color of blue. Back in object mode, sorry, now I'm back in object mode. So this is what we have. Okay. Next thing we need is pretty horrible colors. Um, <laughs> sorry about this. Really horrible. Um, we select this object, the P cube, and go to mesh and create a mesh network, which creates, of course, 10 of them. Now I want to distribute them slightly unevenly. That means I choose a random node. So I'm in mesh, I have all the options here and I choose random, add random node. So the random node distributes them in uh, their position um, according to this sliders here, these sliders here. So I don't want them to be distributed in this direction uh, uh, in a random way. So I uh, make this value zero. Up and down is fine. That's this value here. And the Z position is forward or backward, which is fine too. Now I want uh, uh, some rotation here, and I only want the rotation in this axis here. That's all I want. Um, let's make not too much uh, noise here. <laughs> um, now I want more of them. Instead of 10, 40. Here they are. Now, I think under the random node, we might separate them a little bit more uh, with the Z position here like this. Okay, now they are fine, I think. They're not really intersecting each other. Maybe the ones back there. No, not really. Okay, now we will go back to our main mesh node and introduce dynamics. And as you might remember from previous tutorials, um, the objects will fall down to this uh, infinite uh, flat layer here. Boing. And then they will sit there and relax and uh, do whatever they like according to gravity. Let's increase the frame range here a little bit to see that cool animation. It's always nice to watch. Imagine you have 400 of them. Really fun. And this one doesn't fall. It's just right like in the, in the real world. It's a dynamic simulation. Okay, um, here they are, horrible colors. Um, we go back to our dynamics node, and here we have constraints. This section. Let's just get the orientation properly. We have the collision shape. We don't have a collision shape other than that uh, plane down there. Physical properties, it's gravitation damping, etc. I think it's actually not gravitation. The gravitation is under the bullet server or wherever. Yeah, bullet solver, it's called. And down here you have the per point adjustments, which we don't need now. Uh, we'll uh, create a constraint. It accepts uh, a mesh constraint. We can do that. Uh, so it will be constrained to an object, for example. But instead, we right mouse click, we just create a constraint uh, without any further purpose. Uh, Ian Waters, who programmed this ingenious tool, Mesh, um, in, in introduced the little 
lines here between the objects which tell us about their connectivity. And the interesting thing is that when they fall down to the floor, their connectivity is behaving a little bit dynamic. They stick together, but not totally. There is something happening here. Let's watch this again. Now, when you double-click this, the attribute editor for the mesh constraint, these things here, opens, and it's currently enabled. If you disable it, you will back to the old animation. If you enable it, you have the glue between them all. The glue type is here. Now let's try a spring. We have to rewind the animation. It basically looks the same. It's probably a little bit different. But the um, the bouncing on the floor is totally different now because they're not glued all together. They're in a, in a spring mode. And uh, if you change the max, uh, the search distance here from 5 to, say, 1, um, let's see what's uh, visible here. Um, so you have a, a connection here and no other connections. So let's see what the blocks do. See, these two stick together, all the others don't. And that's a search distance. Um, if we increase the search distance to, say, 1.5, we get more connections here. See? Now the close ones here are all connected with a spring or with a glue, whatever. Um, and now they behave differently. We have connected, connected um, sets of uh, objects here. So that's the search distance. If we uh, increase the search distance to 10, we have uh, basically them all being together. Let's uh, reset it to 5, which is the default. We could play a lot with these things, but we go down to Custom now. And Custom, um, we will connect not to the nearest, but to a point. And now watch what's happening when I choose this command, Connect to Point. They're all connecting to that point here. And this object still is working. So let's see the animation now. You see this one is bouncing off the floor. Let's rewind the animation and check the floor. We find the floor by sort of selecting it. In the outliner it jumps to Mesh Bullet Solver and here under the Bullet Solver, which is basically the gravitation module here, we have the ground activated. If we deactivate it, uh, it would have no influence on the dynamics anymore, but of course we want it. But instead of minus 20, which means it's down there, let's uh, put it to minus 15 or 14. And now let's rerun the animation. Now many more of them bounce on the floor. And stick to the floor, of course. I mean, we could play here forever. I only want to point your interest to one more thing, which is called a motor. A motor? Yes, a motor. Go to Mesh. Go to Dynamics. Double-click the constraint. And here we go down to the motor. And we check the rotational motor. What the heck is that?
Can you see the motor is working? Let's, let's raise the value here. Now we have the motor working in this rotation here. That's the y, the y axis goes upward. So the motor turns our objects, rotates them in this circling motion now. Of course, they stick on the floor. Of course, you can change this in the dynamics section. Now let's finally disable the motor. The motor was just the little extra in this tutorial. And check breakable. That means the, the objects will be disconnected under certain circumstances. The breaking threshold is here, for example. Let's have a look. Well, thank you for watching and keep mashing.